Hi, I'm Glenn Southern. I'm the Aroid artist here on YouTube. And this and all of these around me are Syngonium. And they're one of the most popular house plants that you'll find these days in, in the hobby. And they're, they're easy to grow. They're very, very good for beginners. And there's a load of cheap ones that you can start with. And whatever you learn with the cheap ones pretty much carries through with all the, the more expensive ones and the more the weirder varieties. So what you learn isn't wasted and you just carry on increasing your collection with better and better plants or more and more uh, uh, more desirable plants as you go. So how do you get more? Well, how about propagate? In them so let's take a look at how i propagate syngonium and we'll propagate some of mine in in this video okay so let's just walk through some of these um i don't have r many really basic ones they're all slightly higher than than the the common ones um, I started with common ones. Uh, I'm just looking around the studio now as I'm talking to see. Um, probably the most common I've got is something like this one here. So this looks like a, um, it, it is actually an, uh, a Syngonium podophyllum albo, but this is a reverted one. So that makes it that the variegation's gone on it. So it's probably quite a plain looking plant now compared to some of the others we're going to see. But you can see it's getting bigger leaves. And I've got it on a quad pole and it's growing up. So this 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 will make quite, quite a nice looking plant, but it's reverted. So we haven't got any, I don't think there's any variegation on this one whatsoever. So it's not a waste because it's a nice looking plant, but it wouldn't be classed as desirable and it wouldn't be worth anything. So, and in a lot of these videos, I'll show you how I care for them. So pretty much this is in pond and it sits in um, just literally pond, which is um, like a stone base. We've done a few videos on it. I'll, I'll put a video up above there about how I use pond. Um, and I water it probably once every two weeks because it holds the water quite well. So that's quite a nice uh, looking basic plant there. So we'll just put that one out of the way and we'll have a look at something else. So the next step up from that really is the same plant, but the albo version. So the uh, the albino version or ver albo, um, the albo variegata. So this one has got, uh, let me just move that out of the way now so you can see this one a bit better. So this has got some much more, uh, ver much more um, uh, variegated leaves in it. So it's got some nice uh, white splotches on it. It's got some yellow variegation in it, which makes it even more attractive. It's got white half moons there. It's got some slightly variegated and then some reverted as well. So the, even this is reverting, uh, you know, in, in some of the areas. So you could actually start chipping these away. So when you're propagating now, we could take some of these um, reverted leaves away. That's one way to keep your um variegation going but i like lots of green on my plants and, and the, the reason they're green is because they're full of chlorophyll and chlorophyll means they're gonna gonna provide their plant with all the energy it needs so to keep these going these white leaves although there is chlorophyll in them it's sometimes better to leave some greens on the plant you don't want an all white leaf um, it's very rare to be able to keep an all white leaf going you can do it um, but it, it's not getting enough energy so that's an elbow. They're, they're very, very common now. You can pick those up quite, quite cheaply from all over the place now. Um, so we'll put that on one side. I have quite a few of them. I'll show you a couple more of, 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 of those elbows, but ones that look a little bit more special. So when you get more white in them, um, so as I was saying, you know, that you don't want a plant that's all white, but what you would want is this. So that's a half moon, a, a, a bit of yellow variegation on it there. You've got, um, you know, whitish with green half moon, a little bit of green, a little bit of reversion on there, and then loads more whites coming through. Uh, no full whites on this particular one, so I don't think I've got any whites to show you today. But that's the same plant, actually. That, that came from the same plant as the previous one. So it's a nice looking plant. It grows up nicely. It's a lot slower than the ones that have got reversion uh, or reverted leaves in them because obviously there's less chlorophyll and it's 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 having to work harder with with less really but that's that's a, a nice plant there so we will we will be propagating one of these in in a moment so let's have a look at a few uh different ones now so 
this is one that everybody seems to desire not not so much these days because it's gone a bit less um out of fashion and, and and less popular but i am an absolute lover of this so this is the batik so you'll find if it, the word batik is is a, it means a type of print and a type of pattern and you can see why because it's got some serious patterning now it's not much different than some of the very very cheap ones so you'll find things like Syngonium angostatum and even white butterfly and um, uh, even like some some of the very very cheap ones will look similar to this. So you have to be very careful that your what you're buying is actually a batik. But these grow like weeds for me, the batik. Does, so that's probably one of the reasons why it's it's you know it, it, it's not as um, exclusive as it used to be because everybody can grow it and then sell it cheap. So that's that's one that I do like. So. This one here is a, a red spot. Um, th there's a more expensive version than this that I'm just going to spray this because it's got dirt on it when I lifted it off the shelf. You can see there all the soil on the top, which I don't like. So this has got, um, it's got these red markings on it. The, the more expensive one is red spot tricolor. You'll find that's like five times the price of these. So these at this size in the UK are about 40 to 50 pounds. Um, or even cheaper online if you go on eBay and you know it may even have dropped less than that now from, from when I started buying them um, but they've got this ni nice pink splotching on them um, and you can get some really nice colours coming through but um, I don't keep many of these um, but they are nice they are nice if you just want a single plant so um, similar to the uh, batik in a way is this now this is one of my favourites so this is the mojito um, now this has got lots of splotches on it, got lots of very well not white variegation but lots of green variegation, uh, um, splotchy and black. It's got you know lots of splotches on this one. So and this one again, this can get to some quite significant size if you let it go up a pole. Um, and what I tend to do with these, if I'm going to put them poised, I just grab them all together and I tie them together like that. And what you'll find is the new growth comes up. Um, similar to what you can see here, this, this growth is just coming out of the petiole of the previous one, which is how they grow. So that's a classic one for propagation, and we'll do that one in a minute. That's one of the ones we'll do in a minute. So just a couple more. There are loads and loads and loads that you can find, but one, some of my favourites. So this is a rei, a Syngonium rei. This is a very, very dark leaf plant, um, and it gets even darker if you spray it so if you just give the leaves a little bit of a spray every day you don't have to do that they don't need it at all but you'll find that they go very very dark um when they like like some of the alocasia like a black velvet it, it's much much blacker and much darker once you've got it wet um but you'll get you know i, I absolutely adore these now this one has got this coming out of it so this is seeking uh, this, this is in the wild would be like a trailer or, or, or a runner and it's it's looking to find something to latch onto so it can take this vine up the up a tree or up a wall or something like that so that that's that's a good thing to look for if you want to propagate from so again we'll talk about that in a minute and then i have got loads more but i'm just going to show you one more here um so this one is a uh when landi eye so um so this one's got this stripy leaf same sort of leaf pattern, same sort of leaf shape, but the patterning has got this white vein down the midrib. You'll see this uh, this white that branches off, so it can be quite an attractive plant um, when you get it lar you know larger leaves. And it's got that tri, it's got the two ears at the at the back there, so it's similar to one called uh, a very very cheap one you can get that looks like this shape but doesn't have this pattern called uh, a tri leaf wonder. Um, and and that would give you the leaf shape, but not but not the patterning. So that's another. One. Now there are, there are many 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 more that you can get. Um, but let's have a look at how I propagate them. So let's just start with the very very basics. So to propagate, and we've done lots of videos on how to propagate. I only use two methods for syngonium. So I don't use moss, which is very very common for most other plants, most other aroids. Uh, I never do it in soil ever. It just never ever works for me. Um, and most of, most of what I do is these two methods, and they're both the same really. So I either just take a cup and put water in it. So we'll just fill this up as fast as I can. So that's pretty fast. 
Um, so that is how I do most of them, just plain old water. And the other way is to take perlite. So perlite, this um, mineral that you get in any garden centers, and it's just lightweight. And I find that wh why I like this is one, it floats. So that means that if you, if it can float, you'll see in a second with this, that it floats to the top and it leaves a bit of space at the bottom and that you, you can use that to stabilize the plant while it's, while it's propagating. So you can see there, there's space at the bottom and it doesn't soak up the water and then sink. So it stays like that. So if you stick your cuttings in here and you only have an inch at the top, the, the, the roots will be in the water and the, and the plant will be stable in there. So they're the only two methods that I use. And the reason I do that is over time, I've tried other methods and the plants always droop. They droop significantly. So if you were to take these now and do the cuttings that we're going to do and just put them in the moss, the following day, they would all be very, very droopy. And I was getting some loss with those. So I'm only going to do these two methods. So at the moment, I'm just going to cut everything and put it into the water just, just, just for now. So let's take the first one then. So we'll do this one, which has been, I've been after doing this one for quite some time. So this is my mojito that we talked about. And you can see it's got these lovely big leaves, lovely big leaves here. But what we're looking for now is we've got new growth here. So normally I wouldn't be, wouldn't want to really snip that until it, it it's, it's actually out. So you could say we could leave that or if you want to, you can go, you know, take a chance on it and see if it will it will come out if it's got another leaf. So let's follow it down. So it's from this leaf down the petiole it comes to here and that new growth has come out of the back of this petiole. And if you follow it down, you'll come to the first node area, the first bumped area that you can see. And what you're looking for there is any kind of an aerial root. Now here there's one, two and on the back another one. So there's three there. So if there's three aerial roots, you pretty much know that you're going to get quite a good take on that. So get yourself some secateurs, scissors or snippers, whatever it is you prefer. Try and keep them clean. Most people will tell you to clean them. So I just I just dip mine in alcohol every few weeks. So it, it does keep bacteria down. I've never had a problem, but it's worth it's worth doing it. And you go up close to your plant and we've, we've identified where we want it. So just below this node here, and we just take this node and we just snip it off like so. So get our, get our snips inside there, and we just take it off there like that. Now what that's given me is the first cutting with not much, I could have given it a bit more space there, aerial roots there, and this one that's coming out. So that will take no problem. So you simply just pop it either into water and then leave it. That will root probably in a, in a couple of weeks, you'll see root growth on that. Or what we'll try is we'll stick it in here, which is into the perlite. So that's perlite and water, as I've said, and it's stable. So that's why I like doing this method. It holds it up vertically. So that's the first one done. So we'll put that here in front of the other camera. So that's the first one that we've, we've done. So that's the only one that I want to do. Now, some people, and what I do do with a lot of aroids is, I actually leave the cutting to callus over, so dry off on the end. Um, and then some people dip it in rooting hormone or rooting powder. And I, I have a, a few different ones here. So I use rooting powder here and rooting gel. But I, for Syngonium, I have never, or certainly not since I started keeping them, I've never bothered letting them callous. I just let them go straight into water. And I've never bothered using these products. Um, simply because I've never found any benefit from them whatsoever for, go for going into water. So it's up to you. Uh, by all means, try it and experiment with it. But uh, it's not something that I, I've ever needed, really. So let's try something a bit more dense now. So we'll try this one, which is the, uh, is the Batik. So the Batik is, what, again, I've said to you already, this is a, it's a lovely, lovely plant, quite desirable. So let's go by our own little rules. We're going to have a look at it and see what we can see inside and see if we can find anything that's got any nice nodes. So we've got one here and one here, a light looking one actually. And that comes down to a node here with some aerial roots, lots of aerial roots. And to be honest, that's probably the only one that I would want to snip. There's a little tiny one come through there. So I could separate that as a, as a, 
separate plant altogether. Um, but realistically, I think it's going to have to be that that node there. So that one that we that we just looked at. Um, so again, we just take our once we know what we're going to do. So it's going to be that one there. So just zoom in a bit. OK, so down below the node. Let's get it in there. And three, two, one, snip. There she goes. And that gives us our second one. So that's our batik. You can see there it's got, hopefully you can see, it's got the two aerial roots, three aerial roots there. So again, I never, so far, I haven't had one that hasn't taken when, it, that when there's been an aerial root. So it always takes when there's an aerial root to start it off. And again, I'm not going to let it callous. I'm just going to pop it straight into the into the water or in this case I'm going to pop it straight into the same tub so just push it down very gently and if you can't get it down if there's any resistance get a pen and just just grab one pen or in this case a spade just pop a hole through the perlite and that'll break the the resistance and then that means that when you do this it will just sink right in like that and again holds it upright you can see if there's any drooping now because it's held upright, um, and then that that makes it quite an easy an easy way to uh, to secure it while it's while it's propagating. So there's two done. So we'll move that one out of the way. So let's have a look at what else we want. Do we want one from the Wendlandii? Um, actually, uh, I don't see any aerial roots on this. So you can see this joint here where where you've got this. Um, division here there's no aerial roots there at all there's a little bit showing there but it's not an aerial root i don't think there is possibility of going here but i don't see anything that gives me confidence that that would go easily so i'm actually going to leave that i'm not going to do anything with that one at all i'm going to leave it over there so let's have a look at the the red spot and we'll have another look at this one so what have we got? Can we see anything that, that gives us an idea of where we can take it from? I think it's the same story with this one. We haven't got enough growth on this yet. Um, there's quite a few dead ones in there. So, um, and I could take it from really low down, but I'm not confident that any of them would take. If you really, really wanted to with this plant, you would actually do a separation rather than a propagation. So you would go in, get rid of all the soil and literally peel them apart and see where the separated roots would be. But don't do it if you're not happy with it, if you, if you don't think you can do it um, safely. So let's do two more. We'll do this one now. So this is a different proposition here now. So this is the one that had the runner, if you remember. So um, it, th that one's trying to find, you know, this, this runner's trying to find a pole or it's trying to find its way up, you know, some way of growing. And then if you look down at the bottom, it's all coming off one stem. There's only one growth point down here. Um, that's going up here. So if I was going to take anything, one, I could take the top, which I've just I've just said, um, and then I could take the one just below it there, and there is a node, there's actually a node there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that one. So the first thing I'm going to do is just snip this off, which is the, um, the little bit of a tie that's holding it on. So we'll snip that off before I show you. So I'll just undo that one. Make sure you don't cut anything while you're doing this. These aren't the sharpest, actually. I think I might, I might invest in uh, something else for these. So let's have a look. And there's a tie on the top, actually, that I didn't notice. So we'll take that support out because we're not going to need that anyway. And what that leaves us is quite, quite clear now. You can see this growth coming up here, this little leaf here, and then this massive long runner, and then down to this one here with the little aerial, tiny, tiny little aerial there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it just behind that aerial there. Um, but I don't need the rest of this at the bottom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take it off here. And then as you can see now, I've got all of this at the bottom. So now what we can do is first of all, we'll chip the runner off. So get rid of that. And that leaves us with single stem here, single, uh, the petiole here down to a node which means we know we don't need anything below the node much so get rid of that and that leaves us with a single leaf cutting 
So that one, as I said before, or as I've done quite a twice before already, is we'll just pop that in that um, into the perlite for now. So in you go and just embed it right down to the leaf. Just dropped it actually, that's not good. So pop it right down to the leaf there, all the way in to make sure it's in the water. So that's another one done. Now, the last thing you want to do there is this runner. Now it's got new life there with a node here. There's actually a node there. And here you've got just one leaf and a node and then nothing down below. So this nothing down below can go here, which leaves the one leaf from the node and the run. Now what I'm gonna do, it, this is, I'm gonna contradict what I've said because this is a runner, I'm actually just gonna bury this in one of my prop boxes. Um, so, it, uh, it, and then it will take here and here. If I just pop that in water, nothing will happen here. And I don't wanna cut this off because this leaf is still giving some life to all of this. So I'm just literally gonna lay it down in a prop box and leave it. So that one is slightly different. And then the last one we said we'd do is an elbow. We'll do one of the elbows. So let's find one of our Syngonium elbows that we like. Okay, so I didn't show you this one. Um, this is one of my nicest ones. This has got some seriously nice growth all around it. Um, good lot of green on it as well. Lots of green here. Um, but a good mix of yellow and white. But the reason I picked this one is I always find whenever there's red in the stem of an albo, Syngonium albo variegata, you're going to get a lot of variegation. Or if you see stripes in the stem, there's a good chance. So I noticed um, this one's got white, white petiole, red petiole, um, and it's giving me really nice white variegation there. So what I also noticed is this here, which is a really nice pair. There's one that's just coming out that is got quite a bit of green in it here. Let me show you. And I've got this one, which is the really, really nice white leaf there. Well, well half moon leaf, actually. So... Um, so what we're going to do with that one is we're going to take it right down from down here. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful with this. Um, let me just undo it. So I'm just going to snip it off camera for a second. This is just the tie that I'm snipping. Got to be careful with this one. I don't want to do this, this two-handed, uh, sorry, one-handed. Um, so I've just moved the camera down for this because it's really tight in there and I want to show you what I'm doing. Now, when I looked at it, I noticed that in here, deep in here, there is another aerial node and another aerial root there. So we want to take it uh, there just below that. So you have to pull very, very carefully. You have to pull this one down to be able to get it. So go really carefully with this and go in probably actually with more delicate scissors or something that can get deep inside. Um, and then go right in tight, as close as you can to the base and snip it off. Now that might be a bit of a gamble. It might have been a bit too close, but I didn't want to ruin what I've got on the plant. I wanted to, I wanted to keep a lot of this growth going up here. So it's not taking away all of this growth at the top. But what it has given us is this lovely one here and with one here. Now that is a bit too tight. That, that, that probably is not the best thing that I've done. So you can see there it's got, um, get rid of that, it's got one, two, three aerial nodes. It's got two, as I say, one just coming out. Um, and this is lovely. It's more yellow than white actually in this light. You can see it much better now. So that's how to snip an elbow. And again, we'll just pop that in our uh, tub here, or for, for now, just while I'm preparing. We'll just pop it in water. So that's it. We've got quite a few propagated there now. And I'll, I'll do an update in a few weeks um, on, on the channel or on my Facebook or Instagram. But they look absolutely fine. There, there, there won't be any fails in this. It very rarely fails if you're doing it in water. Um, might take a while with, with some of them. So the more elbow there is in there, or the more white variegation, the longer it sometimes takes. Uh, and I might split these down into individual ones. I did that just for the, for the video. So as you can see, there's quite a few different... Um, uh, I've got quite a few different um, Syngonium in my collection. And the reason I have is because I keep snipping them like this. So you can see that, you know, they do take... The, the, these are all from most of what you see 
here the elbows are all from one or two plants actually um and the you know all the others are just ones that i've mostly got as a one leaf and just grown them myself so the the mojito was one leaf the batik was one leaf the red spot was actually from a garden center super cheap i was really lucky to be there at the right time for that one um uh, and the Wendlandii I was one leaf as well. So they do grow really, really quickly. So I'll get those propagating and I'll give you an update in a few weeks. I hope you're enjoying these videos. And if you like this one, please give it a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other plant lovers who might like this kind of content. And if you like it enough to click a like or a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel? And we'll let you know when we upload new content, which is currently every week.